are constellations never changing? Today I want to start my video with another question from Eric D. from T. 149. Throughout thousands of years the same constellations have remained fixed in their same patterns without moving out of position whatsoever. If the Earth were a big ball spinning around a bigger sun, spinning around a bigger galaxy, shooting off from the biggest bang as NASA claims, it is impossible that the constellations would remain so fixed. Based on their model, we should, in fact, have an entirely different night sky every single night and never repeat exactly the same star pattern twice. Well, I guess there are three ways to find out whether constellations do change. First, we can try to observe the changes directly. Second, we can compare maps of the sky from different times. And three, we could ask experts. Let's start with the direct observation of changes. How big would a change have to be so that we could see it with our own eyes? To answer that, we need to consider two things. The amount of the change and the time it takes for that change. The human eye can resolve an angle between two objects of about one minute of arc that is 60 arc seconds. Is this much? No, not really. The moon is about 30 arc minutes wide, so our eyes can resolve about 1 30th of the moon. It looks much in this photo, but usually we see the moon about this size. So now that we know what our eyes can resolve, Let's put it into stellar context with one of the best known constellations of the Northern Hemisphere, the Big Dipper. It is pretty close to us. Its nearest star, Magras, is 58 light years away and its farthest star, Dupe, is 124 light years away. We said that our eyes can resolve an angle of one arc minute. But what would it mean for Dupe to change its place one arc minute sideways? After a little bit of trigonometry, we find that Dupe would move 0.03 light years for one arc minute. That's a pretty big number in kilometers. But the next question is, how fast would it have to move so we would actually see it with the naked eye? Let's do a test. We already know that the moon is about 30 arc minutes in diameter. So we can use it as a measure. Do you see the little star above it? A little bit to the left? Let's move it sideways. I moved it exactly one arc minute in 10 seconds. Have you seen the movement? Let's do it again, one arc minute in 10 seconds. Can you see it? No? But it was a huge distance. Nothing would ever move that fast through space. Usually things are way slower. So I guess we can forget direct observation with the naked eye. But there is a solution for both problems. Use better eyes and take more time for your observation. The problem is, the further away the stars are, the smaller is the angle between the positions, which makes the observation much more difficult. It is like a train ride, where the closer objects just fly by, while the objects near the horizon seem to stand still. This effect is called parallax and helps to find out the distances to the nearest stars. We measure the apparent positions of a star, say in spring and autumn, and the angle between these positions lets us calculate the distance of a star. The closer it is to us, the bigger the angle. But back to our constellations. What movement does Eric expect? 
the Earth were a big ball spinning around a bigger sun, spinning around a bigger galaxy, shooting off from the biggest bang, as NASA claims, it is impossible that the constellations would remain so fixed. Based on their model, we should, in fact, have an entirely different night sky every single night and never repeat exactly the same star pattern twice. What he is saying is that when a galaxy rotates, the stars should change their relative positions. But is that true? Let's look at the galaxy. It is a pretty stable system and staying stable, at least in disk galaxies, the sidelines only change very slightly over billions of years. Eric's problem seems to be that he is underestimating distances and confusing stable and erratic systems. Disk galaxies are very stable, as stable as our own solar system. That does not mean that there occur no changes. But talking about changes, Eric made a second claim. 149. Throughout thousands of years, the same constellations have remained fixed in their same patterns without moving out of position whatsoever. Now, this is a very strong claim. Can we check that? Can we find out how the constellations that we see today have looked thousands of years ago? The sky map Eric shows here is from 1661 and it was made by Andreas Celerius. If it is any good, we should be able to put a modern sky map on top of it and find out what has changed in the sky, shouldn't we? First we take the old map and mark three well-known constellations. The Big Dipper, Cassiopeia and the Swan. The shapes look pretty much the same today, but what about their places? When we put the modern map on top of the old constellations, we see that it doesn't fit at all. When we align the Big Dipper of both maps, we find that Cassiopeia and Cygnus have swapped positions. And the swan flies into the opposite direction. Maybe it's flipped? If we flip the whole map to get the constellations into the same order in both maps, the Big Dipper has changed direction. So we may ask, how accurate is this older map? And how accurate will be constellation descriptions from thousands of years ago, when they did not have precise instruments to map them? So Eric's claim that constellations have not changed in thousands of years cannot be proven with maps or descriptions. Even worse, his claim is false. Between the following two images of the Big Dipper lie 6,000 years of human history, from pyramids to computers. There is a change, but you have to look very closely. The universe is so big, much bigger than you will ever imagine, and everything takes its time. A human life is just a brief glimpse. But as with a tree, you won't see it grow in a day. But if you look again much later, you will see the difference. Just because you are impatient does not mean there is no change, Eric. Scientists have measured that change. Perhaps you should start to read their papers.